singing. Her beautiful name is, and nothing can teach it is. Her powerful name is, in the name of Jesus. Her full name is, the name of Jesus. Her full name is, the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Alright, so I was going to go to another worship song, guys, but I'm like, no. <laughs> you guys heard enough of me singing, so. Um, So, um, here's the thing, guys. So, let's get to our messages, because my battery power is going to, uh, waste my battery power here. Um, so, let me look at this right now. Oh. So, we are in the, okay... Okay, we got a testimony of the week. Uh, a few of them in the scriptures. Um, this one what came last week, guys, when um, out of nowhere I was studying for the Bible to give to the Word of God to you guys. And this lady named Alexis called me from Las Vegas uh, talking about that Something happened in the past in 2013, way back in the past, when I before I became a a Christian. That and I was still Catholic. I, well, I was a little bit of Christian back then, but re, not really what I was doing right now. But um, I have a commit to God. But um, past past tense, um, we. Somebody called me for about my past about 2013 that I ordered some magazine now. They offer me magazines. Well, I, and they said I didn't have to pay for it. But then again, they complained and they, uh, they asked me to pay for it. I'm like, I'm not paying for magazines that I've been offered for free. So... So then they, they want to take me to court in Vegas. This this uh, lawyer from Vegas called me. I don't know how she got my cell phone number. And this cell phone number I have for like uh, since I've been here in Wooded Hills. So that's kind of a weird thing. So that you guys got to be careful of scammers. There's a lot of scammers out there today. They can scam you really easy. So... And then the devil and the Satan's that that's how they go through the scammers. People um, ask for money and all that. So, uh, but to tell you the truth is going back to the past. This is way back when I was a little bit younger, and you know I was stupid back then, and um, I was dumb. That's one of the things I got in trouble for. When I was a Catholic back then, um, that I, um, 
I did this, I did that, I and mean, like, um, and I, my family members always uh, cl cleaned half of my debt, so I don't know how much I owe money to people, but I don't really owe money. Now, I do what God tells me, and God is going to clean my sins in, in the past. I did the mistakes for on, so I'm, I'm 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 doing what he's telling me. So I went to pray dot com and prayed about it because I want my sins. I want these lawyers. I want all everything in the past, the sins and everything I committed, uh, gone away because I'm a Christian now. I believe in the faith of Jesus Christ. So. Um, so I haven't heard from this lady since last week. So I'm assuming that God did His work, work. So uh, in in Jesus' name. So I want to share what uh, what pray dot com um, and the people from West Angels of Christ and God of Christ sent me. It was a scripture of one of the members sent me sent me because I'm actually friends with them. On pray dot com, they always pray for me. They I pray for them. I pray for everyone who listens to me, uh, and I pray that they come one day to our our church. So, and or hear hear me hear the word of God in in person in life. So, so one of the members of pray dot com says that. Um, he gave me a scripture in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 through 24. Um, it's talking about walking in spirit, in the spirit. And I'm reading out a new King James Version. Um, it says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lasts against the spirit and spirit against the flesh and these are the contrary to one another so that you do not do the things you, that you wish but if you're led by the spirit you are not under the law um, verse 19 says now the words the works of the flesh are evident which are Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, uh, adultery, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts, outbursts of wrath, selfish abusions, dissensions, and histories, uh, Evelyn, Evelyn, murders, drunkenness, reveals, and the like of which I tell you beforehand just as I also told you in time and past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God and verse 22 says um, but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness and faithfulness Verse 23 says, Gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. And um, in verse 24 says, um, And those who are our Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, So verse 16 says, um, live by the Spirit, refers to be under the Spirit's directions and empowerment. The Greek verb here is pre, pre pretility, typically means walk. It also can be used to express the metaphor from the Jewish tradition referring to a person's Conduct for that this reason the, the phrase is often translated to live by the spirit so they're talk also talking about um, 
The desires of the flesh means the Greek word meaning flesh refers to the part of the human nature that causes people to put their own selfish needs ahead of everything else. And I'm getting this point because it, it's about me, but it's also people out there can blame you stuff. It isn't true, but you still have to walk in the faith of Jesus Christ. So this is that's my testimony message right now. So in verse 17 says, The flesh desires against the spirit. The spirit and the flesh are not in a, in a stall match. Mate, the flesh does not frustrate desires of the spirit, rather the spirit frustrates the desires of the flesh. And verse 18 says, uh, trying to get to verse 18 here. It says, if you lead by the spirit, the spirit in the law represents mutual, exclusive ways of living. Either people live according to the flesh, by satisfying its desires, or they live according to the spirit of God in a matter that reflects his character. Paul lists his, uh, Key's characteristic in verse 22 and 23. We're actually going to get to that point, but... But, um... The law can define and identify sin, but it cannot provide the power of the resisted, resist sins. Nor does the law install within people that concerns, desires, and character of God. However, uh, believers are not left on their own. They have been given the spirit of the living God to empower them against sin to transform their hearts and minds. Now in verse 19 through 21, it's talking about more than half of the works of the flesh listed here don't know, form a possibility conflict among people. While the, this list is not exotic, though, it, it, it quickly represents life apart from the spirit. So in verse 19 says, Deeds of flesh refers to sinful actions of human beings who put their own selfish needs ahead of others. Uh, sexual immorality and perverity, perverity and licentiousness, each item is listed, refers to ungodly, unlawful sexual acts, actions. And verse 21 says, the ones who practice such things, the Greek partic participate here is um, prasenetis is used in the present tense, referring to people who continually ornate their lives toward deeds of the flesh. Now we're talking about kingdom of, go of God means refers to the demand in which God is, is the king. In the Bible, believers instead extend God's reign through obedience, loyalty, and love. Those who ornate their lives toward, toward the flesh will not be inherent the kingdom of God because they have established a kingdom of their own. And that will be... Sorry, guys. Uh, there we go. So, verse 22 says, The fruit of the Spirit. Well, this list, which could contrast in verse 22 for 23 which contrasts with the work of the flesh which is in verse 19 for 21 is not exhaustive but representative these trends uh, describes the desires or characters that God cultivates in believers through his living presence So 
So the phrase of the fruit of the spirit in this context refers not to, quote, spiritual fruit, but to, quote, fruit that the spirit produce. This latter translation best supports Paul's argument that the prediction of the guardianness in life of the believer does not require the law in the empowerment of God's spirit. If verse 23 says, Against such things there is no law, well, when the life of the believer expresses these qualities, there is no need for the law. Those who live by the Spirit, in verse 16, produce fruit of re reflecting the character of God that is the law could not do it. And, um, and you can see that in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verses 21. However, this list shouldn't be turned into a new kind of law, a replacement for faith in Christ and life lived by the Spirit. And my last scripture I'm going to say in verse 24 is, Crucify the fl a flesh that through faith believers participate in Christ's death and resurrection, leaving behind the orientation towards selfish desires. In the book of Galatians chapter 2 verses 19 for 20, we'll say that. And then uh, another t scripture what came up this week. Um, um, if I could get to the, my scripture, that would be great. In the book of Acts chapter 1. Um... And we're going to go to first eight says. Okay. So in the book of Acts chapter one, verses eight says, um, in New King James Version says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and, Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So what it's saying that the location mentioned in this verse represents a geographical broadening in the scope of the apostles mission for from Israel's capital to the land of Israel and to the entire world this also reflects to the structure of the book of Acts the church spreads its in Jerusalem in the book of Acts chapter 1 through 7 and in Judea and Samaria in the book of Acts chapter 8 and to the surrounding nations in the book of Acts chapter 9 for 28, the rest of the series in the book of Acts. But uh, compared to the book of Isaiah chapter 49 verses 6. So it's talking about the power. The Greek word used here is dynamius. Can refer to the power display in miracles in the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 22, the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 7, and the book of Acts chapter 19 through 11, or more generally the ability of God or people to carry out their purpose in the book of Acts chapter 3 verses 12, in the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 33. God will unable the apostle the apostles to accomplish his work whenever wherever and whatever it is. Our witnesses, my witnesses, is the apostle are called to testify about the Christ to proclaim the reality of his death and resurrection as well as his kingdom and lordship in in verse three of the same in the book of Acts chapter one. Missions and biblical narrative. So, so that, what it's talking about is God wants to spread His word around the world, 
around the nation and here at home. Um, so that's what Relevant LA is trying to do is what God tells us what to, what he wants us to accomplish. And our mission is not here and our mission is not here until he returns to to uh, uh, to warn us and well, until his return. So anyway, so in another testimony I'm thinking it's not in the scripture yet but um anyways there's uh, people out there today that want to judge me and that's not how I, I, I'm gonna, I let them judge me but I'm not gonna sit there I let them come between me and my relationship with Jesus Christ so um and God's always has my back um, and my spiritual parents. Um, when, no matter what happens to me in the world, they're always there for me. So, um, in Jesus' name. But, um, I know I'm going through some stuff right now, but I, I know Jesus Christ is with me in spirit, in my Holy Spirit right now. I know my uh, spiritual parents doesn't know that right now, but um, I'm going through some stuff right now. But um, but I am a Christian. I have and I know Jesus is there with me. I know my spiritual parents are there. I know my new Christian fellowship people and my friends are there, and my family. And always pray for everyone in this world, in this world, and even with the church. And we all make mistakes, and we done with it. But uh, it's time that my good, my Holy Spirit, and my Christian goodness is play uh, be out there and helping people is still in fact, no matter what. Um. And that's it. That's all I have to say. So, anyways, uh, in the book, so we're. I just want to get that out there. I and I'm gonna be praying on pray.com later today. So. So I just want to get that out there. Um, anyways. So. I want to get that out there today. So we're actually going to uh, get into our message now. And we're almost done with this series called 1st John, 2nd John, and 3rd John. We're like two, a few weeks away to be finishing this uh, book. But um, I need to get this onto IGTV from last week. Because it's related to this week's message too. So, um, last week we uh, we turned to the book. So turn to your book uh, Bibles. And I'm reading out a New King James Version. Uh, and let's we're going to talk about chapter four, verses seventeen for uh, for chapter five, verses twelve, and then we're going to get finish up with. The rest of chapter 5 today. But um, I wrote some notes here. So let's turn to the book of John. Chapter 16. Verses 33 in the New King James Version. Or you can read whatever you. What Bible you have at home. But in this series it's talking about. Comfortable Christianity often means a weak. Christianity. In this study on uh, John's three letters, Dr. Tony Evans and I challenge Christians who have grown comfortable and, and complacent in their faith. Fellowship with God is the essence of our faith. And Tony walks through uh, walks through this series, first, second, third John. Uh, today to paint a picture of love, obedience, and the truth out there in the world that hates Jesus, we call to love him and his people with his uh, 
fierce of love. So, um, that's what we got here. So, <sighs> so we got, um, so let's read that, okay? The book of John chapter, we start with the book of John chapter 16, verses 33. They talk about these things I have spoken to you that in, uh, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So in Faith Life Bible study, it says peace. We're talking about peace here. Jesus wants his disciples to understand that they can be at peace. When he suffers and dies, it is the Spirit's ongoing work to grant peace to believers. Um... Uh, the book, so in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 27, uh, uh, in the NLT version, it says, I am leaving you with a gift, slash, peace of mind and heart, then, and, and the peace I give is the gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. To do so. So in the uh, in the um, so we're talking about the conquer of, of the world that Jesus has overcome the powers of the darkness through his death and resurrection. He proclaimed this now because he is already healed people and dr uh, driven out demons. And proven he is able to overpower what people consider immovable forces. Jesus makes this claim as thought it has already happened because it he is confident in his perhatic proclamation that he will rise again after suffering and dying for the sins of of God's people. In the book of John chapter 1 verses 5 in the NLT says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish, extinguish it. So let's read it. Let's read what he's talking about uh, today. So um you guys, uh, let's turn to our Bibles to the book of 1 John, chapter 14, verses 17. We're talking about the cons the consummation of um, of love, and uh, in the first, and it says in verse 17 for 19 in the series, and it says. Love has been perfect among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in the love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment, but he, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. In verse 19 says, We love him because he first loved us. So let's talk about that. In verse 17 it says, Perfect with us. Uh, God love is made perfect or complete. Among believers, when they are reflect God's loving character in their lives, uh, in First John chapter one verses five through seven, First John chapter two verses one through six, First John chapter twenty-eight verses twenty. Oh, I'm sorry. First John chapter two one through six and verse twenty-eight, and First John chapter three verses sixteen through twenty. Love is not an asterisk concept for God, John. 
it concerns the outworking of believers' faith in ordinary interactions with people. Uh, we're talking about other, in verse 17 also says, have confidence in the day of judgment. Believers can't, can be confident on the basis of God's love toward them. They do not have the fear of his judgment. Um, verse 18 says, fear includes punishments. John further explains why believers can be confident of God's love on that day of judgment. God's wrath is reserved for those who unpre unrepentantly dishonor others with their apathy. <clears throat> uh, while believers may remain confident of their position on the day of judgment, they should also maintain serious reverence for God. In the book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 12, in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 17, in the book of Revelation chapter 14 verses uh, 7. And then verse 19 says, First love love us that means God demonstrates this by offering salvation through Jesus so um, now we're getting to the part of um, obedience by by um, by faith okay <clears throat> by faith okay um so in verse 20 through 21 in the same chapter in the book of First John chapter 4 verses 20 through 21 it says if someone says I love God and hates his brother he is a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen how can he love God whom he has not seen and this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. So let's talk about that. In verse 20 it says, he, it's called a liar. Describes everyone who claims knowledge of God but fails to carry out his commandment to love fellow Christians. And by extension, other people in general. And scriptures like in the book of First John chapter two verses four, and the book of Matthew's chapter twenty two verses thirty nine. According to John, this person is a liar because it is impossible to love God without his demonstrating love to other believers. And verse twenty one says, "Love his brother also means doing so." Doing so demonstrates an accurate understanding of